Hi, my name is Ryan. Today I'm looking at this cheap eBay plasma cutter. So this one is a brand name of Susems, but there's a whole bunch of brand names for this. They're all the same machine. They're most easily identified by being called a Cut 50. If you search on eBay, you'll find them by searching Cut 50. They're all the same. They're really cheap Chinese plasma cutters. They they run about 250 Canadian dollars, which is pretty cheap if you have ever tried to look at plasma cutters. Usually those run in the thousands. So today I'm going to have a look at this. I'm going to review it, and I'm going to talk about some of the problems and troubleshooting I had to do with it. So if you're not terribly familiar with plasma cutters, the what, what they are is they cut metal with an arc of plasma, hence the name plasma cutter. They work similar to a, an arc welder, like a stick welder, in that it passes a high voltage current through a workpiece. The workpiece is connected to a ground clamp, and which is connected to one electrode, which is, I believe, negative on this machine. And then the other electrode is in the torch, which you manipulate over the workpiece to do your cuts. The one other component is there's a compressed air stream. So before you buy one of these, know that you're going to need an air compressor. And these don't usually come with all the fittings you need to connect it to the air compressor. So you're going to, going to need to get those fittings as well. This one does come with an air regulator, so you can adjust the pressure coming into the machine. Most compressors will also have an air regulator on them that lets, lets you adjust the output. But you will need some way to adjust the pressure coming into the machine. So once you have an air compressor, and all the fittings you need hooked up. You hooked up to the machine, hooked us to electricity. I picked the Cut 50 because it's cheap and because it'll take a standard 15 amp, 110 uh, North American outlet, which most real plasma cutters will, most professional plasma cutters rather, require a 220 outlet. So this is hooked to compressed air. It's plugged into the wall. Let's turn it on. Takes a moment to spool up. So my piece is grounded. I'm wearing eye protection with the stinger, so now I'm going to start an arc. There's a button here which both turns on the, the arc and, uh, and the compressed air stream. Again. So there you go. As you can see, it does in fact work. It does cut metal, but I'm going to cut in some footage of what I had to do to get to cut that because I had to manipulate this quite a bit to get to actually cut that. And so that's the first biggest problem with this machine. It's not consistent. It's quite hard to get it started. Once you do, it cuts really well. The cuts aren't super clean. Here, I'll take this out, show the camera. Of course, I wasn't using a guide or anything like that, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of slag on the back, which is trivial enough to clean up with an angle grinder. But if you're looking for a really clean cut, this is not the machine for you. It does the job, not super clean, we will need some cleanup. Okay, so a little bit of troubleshooting. I, I cut in some footage of me messing with this. This is the torch, and this is where most of your problems are going to be starting the arc. So the air has to flow through this and out this nozzle at the same time as it's causing an arc to make the plasma. So there's some consumables here. These three parts are consumable. So this is uh, insulating shield, which is needed to keep the arc from happening somewhere other than the tip. There's the actual nozzle, which directs the airflow, and it still needs to be conductive to start the arc. And then there's this electrode right here, which is where the actual arc's coming from. So these can get covered in soot and other, other crap that blocks the current. So that needs to be removed. I've sanded it off here, sanded it off here, to start in that last video. Eventually these will get worn down and need to be replaced, so these are removable. This one's kind of tight, you need pliers to remove it, but this is removable. As, as And I got a whole kit of replacement parts for this. Make sure nothing in here is clogged and, uh, and whatnot. And make sure all the pieces fit snugly into each other. Now keen-eyed viewers might notice that this is a different torch than actually comes with the machine, and I'll explain in a little bit. The next thing you need to check for troubleshooting is the air pressure on the machine. So the machine comes with an air pressure regulator 
and a lot of compressors these days also come with air pressure regulators. However you do it, you need to regulate the air pressure coming into this machine. So I've noticed on forum posts, a lot of people just crank the air pressure all the way up to like 100 PSI or whatever. That's way too high and will blow out the arc. So on the, on the front of this machine here, there's, there's a gauge. I don't know how accurate this is. doesn't really matter. But this is in millipascals. I don't know how it converts to PSI. But I found on this machine, I've adjusted it so that the air pressure is always between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 millipascals on this dial. And I find that to be the ideal range for this machine. I haven't been able to get the arc to work if I'm significantly over 0 0.4, and I haven't been able to get it work if it's under 0 0.2. If it's too high, the air pressure will just blow out the arc, and basically it's like blowing out a candle. It won't let the plasma stream happen. And if it's too low, there's not enough air for the plasma stream to happen, so it needs to be in that Goldilocks zone. So after checking your torch, Checking to make sure your air pressure is good, checking to make sure your connections are good, make sure your ground's good. Uh, sand your workpiece where it's touching the ground clamp, and that'll help a lot. Those will be your main things you're going to be looking for if you're having trouble starting an arc with any plasma cutter machine. Now for this one specifically, I had to do a lot of work to get to it just to get it to work. So first off, I'm gonna, this is a new torch. I mentioned this is different than the one that came with the machine. The one that came with the machine had really loose tolerances on, on the actual torch. And I found that out of the box, it was really loose. Everything rattled, which is not good. But if I tightened everything down, I couldn't get an arc at all. And I found on some forum posts that uh, they had the same problem. If it was tightened down too much, it actually wouldn't arc. It needed a little bit of a gap to work. But the problem is that gap is so finicky, and if you touch anything, it, it'll move everything and put the alignment off. So I got frustrated with that and got rid of that torch completely. Went on eBay, bought this one, which is an AG60, which is a, a kind of a common standard on, on some of the cheaper machines. And this, even though this is still a cheap torch, this is a much, much better torch. Things don't rattle, everything's tightened down, and... It arcs properly when everything's tightened down. The consumables are easy to get. So that's another thing is I, if you are having problems with, with your torch, you may need to replace the torch to get this machine to work. So there's the first big thing I had to do to get this machine to work at all. Now a word of warning about opening a machine up like this. Because you're dealing with such high voltages and converting converting voltages and amperages around, anything that deals like with a lot of electricity like that, there's a potential for capacitors in here to be charged even if the machine is off and unplugged. So you could actually get a shock, a potentially lethal shock, from a machine like this even if it's not plugged in. So if you're not comfortable working with high voltage electronics, you're not a little dumb like me, I would not suggest opening this. Unfortunately, if you buy one of these machines, you're probably going to have to open it. These are capacitors. There's a bunch of other capacitors in here too, but these ones are huge, so be very careful to touch those. The second big thing I had to do after replacing a torch is all the air fittings in here suck, and they all leak. And the machine will work like that, but your air compressor is going to be working really hard, and it's going to be really hard to maintain a consistent air pressure. So, so the second thing I had to do was go and take apart all the air fittings and add Teflon tape, tighten them down. So I just tightened down everything as much as I could, added Teflon tape wherever I could, and just chased leaks. Like One way to do this um, is to hook up your air compressor to it directly without the regulator and just listen for all the hissing while the machine's off because it'll leak everywhere. Try to eliminate as much as possible. Mine still leaks a little bit, but it's barely noticeable at this point. But when I got it, it was quite bad. The third thing is, is a little bit difficult to see. I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. There's a spark gap in here. Let's see if I can find a pointing thing. So there's a spark gap in here. You can kind of see it. It's under this wire. There we go, those two 
little plates that are almost touching is the spark gap. So when the machine's trying to arc, it's actually running uh, an arc across that. If those two pieces are touching, it won't work. If those two pieces are too far apart, it also won't work. When I got it, the two pieces were too far apart and I kind of had to nudge them together. The way I did that, and it's extremely dangerous, is I had the machine on and I was I, with, and I was trying to start an arc while watching that spark gap. And then when it didn't spark, I would turn the machine off, wait a few moments, take a little plastic rod and push that in, uh, in place a little bit, turn it back on, try again. And eventually when I started getting, getting an arc across there, that's when I felt it was adjusted. According to some forum posts, there's also a resistor somewhere around there that I can't see from here. Maybe it's on the back of the board. Nope. There's a resistor somewhere around there that sometimes goes bad. So if you can't get an arc, you've got no leaks and your torch is fine, the next thing I would check is that spark gap. And there's a resistor somewhere in there that apparently goes bad. So that's everything I had to do to get this machine working. Replace the torch, fix all the air fittings, fix that spark gap. And as you can see, it's still quite inconsistent. That's why I say don't buy this machine if you're not willing to take it apart, because you're probably going to have to to get it to work. So would I recommend this? Well, that depends. If you need this machine to work consistently, if you need to cut thick metal, uh, I would doubt this thing could even cut more than a half inch thick piece of plate maybe even less, then no, don't get it. This thing needs a lot of work to get it work pro properly. It's not very consistent. It's not very strong. It's hooked to 110, so it's not gonna cut super thick pieces of plate. And the cuts, while decent, aren't super clean. So for those purposes, no, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're like me and you're a hobbyist who likes to tinker with things, is willing to put up with the time and effort to get this thing working, is willing to dig around the guts, is only only to cut thin pieces of steel every now and then. Yeah, sure. This is this is a fine machine for the price for two fifty bucks. It's way cheaper than a, a normal plasma cutter, and which is just not in the budget for me. So having a plasma cutter is really nice, even though it's not a terribly great one. For those niche applications, it really beats trying to use an angle grinder. But it's not going to compare to an actual professional plasma cutter in any way, shape, or form. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. So these machines don't come with power cords. So they, they have just a little stubby power cord off the end and you have to splice in your own. So I use an old heavy duty extension cord and spliced, in, spliced it in. So just keep that in mind. When you get one of these, you're gonna need an air compressor and to put your own power cord on it. 